Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from colder and colder Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Are You There, God? It's Me, Atheist. <laughs> the podcast. I'm Mark, sitting in for Frank. And I'm Dan, and I don't even know what show I'm on. Yeah, it's a, a new thing we're trying out. We're going we're gonna to go with different names every time. Judy Bloom. <laughs> Uh, that, you know what, that, now we have to do that. Now this show has to be that. I caught you off guard, didn't I? Yeah, a little I tripped bit. you up. You did, I like yeah. it. Yeah. I like it. Coming up on today's show, Lord help us, yes. we're going to be talking about uh, Islam and the Paris bombings and all of that sort of stuff. What are Islams and how do they work? <laughs> and how do I rid my home of them? <laughs> Can I call an exterminator? Do you feel a sense of dread in your basement or attic? Right, exactly. Are you, are you under attack right now? Call us at 800. Yeah, pray for us. We're going to we're going to wade into that. Please do. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, we'll just tell you some f- stories about what's happening in the world and such as we do. Mm-hmm. Marcus, what do you got? Oh, let's see. The first story, I won't start with that one because it's really terrible. Good. Start with the second story. I'll start with the, the slightly less terrible one. Okay. This comes to us from the great state of Florida. Oh, it is a great state. It's not. A Florida <laughs> judge has declared a boy must be circumcised. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Earlier this month, an appeals court upheld a ruling allowing the father of a four-year-old boy to circumcise, first of all, four-year-old. To circumcise his son against the wishes of his mother. Oh, my God. So this is a, 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 a couple that got divorced. Mm-hmm. There's a custody dispute about the son. The yeah. father is a, a practicing Jew. The Obviously. mother is out of practice. Was a Jew. I think was a Jew. Okay. Uh, is there a was? Aren't you always? <laughs> once I don't a, know. Once a Jew, always a Jew? I thought so. I don't know. I think you can renounce Judaism. That you was my to. favorite song in Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> once a Jew, always yeah, a Jew? by the way. It's a great show if you haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, exactly. So an appeals court upheld this ruling, and on it's so crazy. I, I can't even believe it. So on top of it, the judge has slapped a gag order on the mother that she's not allowed to talk to the son about it. She can't even say I'm a, I'm against it or whatever, and then the uh-huh. judge is um, is also saying that she that the, the, the child has to be separated from her for some period before and after the circumcision. Jesus, this Christ. judge wants to cut this kid's dick off. This with judge has a, a Jones fever. for that foreskin like you would not believe. Yeah, so I hopefully this will go to the United States Supreme Court where. Where where they're known for having uh, for being totally reasonable right. and uh, and and for protecting the 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 sovereignty of the individual uh, against right religious practice where the the, the right wing majority course. has never seen a dick they didn't want to cut off right yeah so uh, it's a really terrible story and and um, I guess they're appealing it but it's just crazy to me that a judge in this day and age can order some wackadoo iron age ritual blood yeah. it's a blood sacrifice it's it's isn't it i don't know i it mean it is it draws blood it does draw blood for and, religious reasons and it's like yeah you yeah. and we've we've gone into circumcision on this show and it's we're pretty clear on the on, on we fall pretty heavily on the don't mutilate your child's penis side of things <laughs> right but i mean it it's not the end of the world if a if a circumcision happens. It's it's not very nice. No. I mean, I'm circumcised. I'd probably prefer not to be. I can tell you I can tell the listeners he totally is. Yeah, that's true. Cuz we do it pantsless. Well, yeah, TGIA. oh yeah. We're, I mean, I'm not wearing pants now. Yeah. Obviously. Uh you can't it's a little known fact. You can't effectively podcast in pants. No. And it's and so uh, conversely Dan probably isn't able to tell if I've been <laughs> circumcised or not. It's it's unclear. <laughs> it's, just, it's just insufficient data. It's, it's, it's my downstairs mix up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is uh whether you're for or against it as a concept conceptually. Right. Like that, it is kind of fucked up to say, well, this one parent's religious beliefs trump. And is it necessary in Judaism, or is it just like tradition? That's what I don't know. Another good fiddler on the roof song. Yes, exactly. I, I, I think it is. I think it's it's a, an important ritual. There, that's why they have a whole 
profession called moils. Right. And, but, and it is, I mean, it, it's a ritual. They don't actually just, it, it's not just a doctor doing it in the hospital, although it can be. Well, I think. It, it was for us. Yeah, for you and, I, for you and me it was. But, uh, but yeah, for the Jews, they got the, they got there the had moil, been a, they have a bris, they have a whole thing. If there had been a Jew they in the delivery dude. room when my mom was giving birth, there would have been a scene. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. She's, I, I don't think she'd be down with that. But I think my parents would have felt somehow a little bit uh, like... Their, their 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 liberal righteousness sense would would have been would have gone up. They would have felt sophisticated. By they would have, yes, exactly. We, ooh, we had a Jew with our in our oh, birth. Oh. Really? It's like having a gay decorator, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, so just the courts being involved in this is it adds another layer of oh, incredibly so, inappropriate absurdity. So weird. To yeah. So weird. Uh, I, yeah. There you go. I mean, we live in a country that's all ab- that. Is about protecting your religion over anything. Unless it has to do with a four-year-old penis, then you fucking just hack at it. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, the religious yes. question is much more important than the question of, like, keeping that boy intact. Or just leaving him the fuck alone. Look, look, think of it this way. And the fact that he's four sucks. Yeah. It's worse when they're a baby. And they don't anesthetize them. Right. This poor kid. Imagine the trauma of birth. Thank God none of us can remember it. Right. And then uh, you thought that was bad. Choop. Yeah, exactly. So, and they and 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 when they're babies, I, I believe the foreskin is still like attached to the head of the penis. So they actually have to like jam a thing in there and detach it first. It can be a massive percentage of the skin of the penis at that age. It's sometimes I think it's like forty percent. It's just fucking insane. So if and it's you, like, and and the whole reason that you and I were circumcised is not religious, but rather because some dude uh, named because Mister Kellogg of Cornflakes fame wanted to keep boys from masturbating. Is that why? Yeah. What he wanted to keep boys from masturbating, so he started this whole thing of like, you know, if it was good enough for for Moses or for Abraham, <laughs> oh it's God. good enough for all of us, and it'll it desensitizes the penis so the boys won't do that nasty masturbating thing and then it just became this thing of like the father looked down and said well i want my boy's dick to look like my dick and so they just kept doing it you nobody are, asked any questions you are fucking making that up no that's for really real. yeah 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 well it didn't work no no uh. turns out you still masturbate you just don't get to enjoy it as much oh my god that's so fucking weird well i was just going to close it by saying if you you let a man cut the tip of your baby's penis off without even thinking about it that much. If you or I walked up to a baby on the street and flicked it on the nose, <laughs> they would call the fucking police. <laughs> and, and rightly so. And rightly so. But cut its dick off. Have at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that was the that was the parents asking politely for that to happen. Oh, it's so weird. Oh my God. So anyway, if, if Rab, R- Rabbi Gruber, if you're listening, will you enlighten us on the whole uh, circumcision thing? Help me know, is it is it required of Jewish men, or is it just uh, so- socially... Strongly recommended. Right, yeah, what is that thing? Anyway, um, I'll move on. Oi. Oi, indeed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take us to, from, from the completely unreasonable state of, of Florida to yes. the very reasonable state of Missouri. Oh, um, not far. Not too far of a drive. Uh so in Missouri, there's been there's been a lot of hubbub lately surrounding the uh, the University of Missouri, as you as you well know that their chancellor had to resign and like the oh yeah everybody yeah, yeah. like there's been you know their football team almost yep. almost didn't play a game yes like yes. that's serious shit people yeah let's get it what take it easy yeah everybody calm down yeah. a little bit. Um, part of that has to do with the, uh, the planned, the whole, do you remember the whole planned parenthood thing with the video that was heavily edited, but it was, had to do with, uh, how, uh, apparently it's to do like the, the Mizu, uh, state people had several contracts with planned parenthood to, uh, uh, and and some of them, the university did. Yes. Okay. uh, And some of them were to do with, um, with, with. Getting with using uh, aborted tissue for research, organ and, meats, or for various and sundry uh, organ. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm. Delicious, delicious. Yeah, uh, aborted tissue. <laughs> um, but also, they, they you know they had contracts with Planned Parenthood for uh, their nurses to learn how to care for women and to do all this stuff. And 
like a whole bunch of those contracts were canceled. Uh, they canceled ten contracts with Planned Parenthood. Uh, so, okay, so the nursing school was using Planned Parenthood uh, uh, professionals to help them. Yeah, to, okay, to help them learn how to. Yeah, how to. I guess do pap smears and probably to assist in uh, in abortions as well. May, um, it's such a tiny fucking percentage of what they do. Indeed. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't sit well with the Missouri legislature. Right. And uh, recently, and so so they canceled a whole bunch of their shit. They canceled several of their, uh, uh, 10 of their contracts with Planned Parenthood. Um, and then that, and then now the, you know, like I said, the president of the university had to resign and other people resigned. Right. Was, and, and that was to do with a lot more than just this. Right. Because the university is against abortion. But for racism, yeah, or something. That's kind of how it those plays. Lines. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, they're still sorting all of that stuff out. But here's an interesting thing: a state legislator by the name of Kurt Schaefer hmm. uh, wrote a, a, a letter to the office of the chancellor, trying to stop a research project that uh, a graduate student was doing to get her PhD because she was actually studying something. That he was that made him feel icky. He was she. Her, so the the pro, her project is that she is going and actually asking questions of women who are getting abortions, and asking them how because Missouri is the is the the fancy state that enacted uh, the seventy two hour waiting period right for women considering abortions. Apparently, like, and this is just to make it. This is just to make it a pain in the ass. The, it, they should call it the pain in the ass. It's law. to make it a pain in the ass and more and more unaffordable. Right, right. Because a woman who doesn't live near a, a an abortion clinic, yeah, you know, if you don't live in St. Louis, you have to actually drive, you know, three hours to get to the nearest abortion clinic, right? And then you have to like wait seventy two hours before you can get it. So you right. know, you got a whole vacation on your hands. St. Louis, yeah. Um, so. So the, this woman has is her whole research project is just like how is that seventy two hour waiting period affecting women? Right, that's her project. But this state legislator, who by the way is I think running to be the uh, the the governor, no, uh, the attorney general oh, God. of the state. Great, because yes. clearly a, a a legislator who thinks he has the right to interfere. With a student's research, knows the fucking law. Well, what he's saying is that uh, it she is running afoul of. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's, it's a statute. Oh, it's um, section one eighty eight dot two ten and one eighty eight dot two fifteen of the uh, of the Missouri uh, something or other, which says. Uh, the, oh, no. Section 188.205 says it shall be unlawful for any public funds to be expended for the purpose of performing or assisting an abortion, <laughs> dot, dot, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is her assisting an abortion? Is that is... She is she's assisting an abortion because she is uh, saying she, the word? Well, she's. I mean, she's also like part of her research is, is to figure out how I mean, she's trying to figure out how to make it better for women to have an abortion. You know how how to keep it from being bad, a horrible horrible experience to right. have an abortion. Why should it be? It shouldn't be right unless you're this guy. In which case, it should be the worst thing that's ever happened. And you sh- <sighs> and if it's going to happen, then they should be punished and blah blah blah. So like he's just he's tr- literally trying to stop this right this project from happening. He, he thinks he's a big a big hero culture warrior, but clearly the insecurity that undergirds that is she's going to find out. Research will obviously point out that the 72-hour waiting period right. is bullshit. Right. Yeah, she... It serves she, nothing. She, she had this to say. And, the, you know, uh, he, and he's also very up in arms because her advisor, her faculty advisor, is the head of the sociology department there, I think, and also on the board of the of the Planned Parenthood. Oh, my God. Don't tell anybody. Uh, so so it's clearly... Imagine, imagine if a... a left-wing democrat in some state was trying to shut down some christian kid doing a paper on the efficacy of prayer right the, the this country would come, split into a thousand pieces of absolute 
insanity and rage. Or they would all just feel vindicated in right. their feelings of, of... In their persecution. Persecution, whatever. Yeah. 90% of the country is persecuted. Yep. That's how yeah. it works. She said, you know, the, this, the, the girl who's doing this research project, Lind- Lindsay Ruhr, says, I feel that my research is objective and that the whole point of my research is to understand how this policy affects women. Whether this policy is having a harmful or beneficial effect, we don't know. Which is a great science, uh, sci- a very sciencey response. Right. And I'm guessing she does know the answer because we all know the answer. Right. And uh, she's, but she's being very good and sciencey about it. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure he'll win Attorney General in a walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got that one locked up. Well, good for him. <laughs> anyway, go on. What well, do you let, let me take you to a, a story about a. Uh, well, kind of a late-term abortion, uh, oh, dear. if you will. Uh, this is a grisly, horrible, and bizarre story. Oh, no. Um, Australian Christian, note Christian, hip-hop producer Cody James Maybeer, 31, has been found guilty of murdering a boy he was training to be a soldier for Christ. What does that mean? Uh, What's a soldier for Christ? He decided that this kid was, a, I believe the boy was six or seven. And was going to become a great Christian uh, warrior in the world. Okay. And it was not his own son. It was uh, the son of a woman he was seeing. And uh, the autopsy revealed he died from massive blunt force trauma to the front and back of the head. Mm. Um, Apparently, Christian warrior training is very rigorous indeed. It's very rigorous. Wear a helmet. Yeah, exactly. You... you you probably need to be very prepared for this. Yeah. So he's and his own his own defense attorney. The best he could come up with was saying that uh, his name's Maybeer, saying that Maybeer is an idiot, someone who lacked even a modicum of common sense, <laughs> and that the abusive treatment meted out to the boy was part of his training to be a soldier for Christ. Wait, he's saying, Your Honor. My client's an idiot. Yeah, how could he possibly have known better? Yeah, maybe they don't have the insanity defense in Australia. Maybe it's just the moron defense. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, the mother's already been sentenced to ten and a half years. For allowing it? Yeah. For, oh, wow. For manslaughter and, and negligent whatever. For Yeah, for <laughs> dating an idiot, apparently. Yeah, so... And letting him anywhere near her son. I don't know if this this murderer is an idiot is going to work. Uh, with the court in Australia, the, wow. he he originally tried to say the boy fell off a pogo stick. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Which it's, must have had an incredible spring because it launched him 600 feet in the air, right? It's not, it's not okay. No. Like, no. But a pogo stick? Yeah. Like, that's your... Ch- like, you, you, you didn't fall down the stairs. He got creative. At he, least he got creative. He got way more creative, but uh, I won't read the whole thing because it is so grisly. But it, he, was a, it was a unicycle accident. What are you going to do? Well, then they said, well, pogo stick? He's like, did I mean, did I say pogo stick? I meant he was balancing on a coffee can and fell off. He said that. <laughs> and then he said, when they said a coffee what? can, he's like, oh, actually, I was wrestling him. And he hit his head. I was wrestling him. I had a bat. Yeah. And it's like, oh, he hit his head like 16 times on each side. Right. So... Holy shit. Yeah. No, he actually said the thing about the pogo stick and the thing about the coffee can. I sw- according to the newspaper, according to the, wow. the Australian paper. Yeah, that's what he said. I'll say I'll tell you this, the idiot defense is kind of holding up. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got a case. <laughs> I don't know if that has any legal bearing, but it's clearly true. Well, I'm I obviously I'm sad for the kid, but I'll tell you what. I don't feel good about buying any more of this guy's albums. I know. I had the whole catalog. Because you know me and Christian hip hop, it's especially with an Australian accent. Chris Hop, I like to call it. <laughs> it's uh, it's the best. Yeah, it's gonna be Pogo Hop from now on. Oh so my God. yeah, sorry that was a completely shit shitty story, but and then we made fun of it. So well, now we're we're the bad people. Laughter through the tears. That's right. Oh my God, that's that's horrific. Horrific. People uh people kill people. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, I love that. I love that. Like, no, no, no. This was abuse in Jesus' name, right? And and you know how often that that has been the defense. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, a I lot. Mean, we hear it all the time. Yeah, I'm I'm abusing them. For, you know, I'm cutting off his dick 
for yeah. God. Right. I'm abusing my child for Jesus. Yeah. And you, you know, these, is it the, the Jehovah's Witnesses that don't do blood transfusions? And it takes, juries agonize right. over what to do about that if the child is, let, you know, dies yeah. from lack of blood. You got or Christian whatever. scientists saying, I, I, you know, I'm re- they're refusing. And the thing is, what's amazing about that is that they're the people who actually believe it. When you look at it, you know, when you, not not this moron with his, with, right. with with beating a kid to death, which is Let's see his just picture. no excuse. I'll show you his picture. This yeah. This awesome. Is he? He's pretty fly. Oh, dear. Yeah. He's a dummy. Oh, dear. He's just, <laughs> he looks like a meth addict. Yeah, he looks like an idiot. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I, yeah, I think, but a lot of these, a lot of these people who use their faith as an excuse to beat somebody or to hurt someone are really just enacting what's actually in their book. They're really actually just taking it all the way, the way the book tells them they're supposed to. They're purists. They're the real believers. I mean, right. that's, that's you just take it all the way to its conclusion, and that's where you land. Yeah. Um, fortunately, most people don't actually take their religion seriously. Well, they think they do, but they don't. When, when, you know, when, in this country, it happens all the time when Christians are screaming about, we need 10 commandments in every, every store and every town. And right. It's like, okay, well, first of all, you don't know anything about the 10 commandments. Right. <laughs> Stephen Colbert proved that. Right. Secondly, uh, there are so many things in the Bible that are against the law. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good thing. Remember when we got rid of slavery? That, yeah. That's that's okay. And it only cost 500,000 lives to do it. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, happy story. What do you got? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring in some Argle Bargle. Oh, boy. It's it's Scalia time. Oh, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Fat Tony. <laughs> Fat <laughs> Oh, good. This will this will be a good opportunity for us to uh, to to I isolate our 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 Italian listeners even further. <laughs> so Fat Tony, uh, he he likes to run that mouth of his. Why does he? And uh, he was apparently uh, talking to law students, first year law students at Georgetown University. Which, first of all, that should be completely <laughs> <guess>. against the <laughs> law. Yeah, he's. He's our worst one. Yeah. Don't don't listen to him. At least Thomas just shuts the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so he, here's what he said. He was talking about uh, gay rights. And he was, and. <laughs> but he, did he use the word rights? Well, he, here's, he was talking about protections ah. for the gays. And Condoms. He, he said, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. He said. Quote, what minorities, what, I'm trying to just make, I'm trying to sound fat. <laughs> what, I have nothing against fat people. Why am I being a dick about being fat? It's him. I hate him. I, I hate, hate everything him. about him. I hate his face. I hate his body. I hate everything <laughs> about him. I would, I would make skinny jokes if he was skinny. Yeah. I just, I, he brings out the yeah. worst in people. So I apologize to Italian people and to fat people. And I'm just going to say this. Uh, I hate that man. He said... <laughs> What minorities deserve protection? Mm. What? Is it it's a, it's up to me to identify deserving minorities? Who said okay. G- g- proceed. And, the, he, and then he continued. He said, what about pederasts? <sighs> what about child abusers? This is a deser- this is a deserving minority. Nobody loves them. What? That's as good as I can get to, to like trying to make it make any sense. Is that a quote? That's th- those were all quotations. Those were all literally things that he said, uh, according to the New York Times. Uh, he uh, here's the thing. What I I'm continually baffled by the disconnect between how I view his job uh-huh. and what America is about, and what the law of America is about, and the Constitution, mm. and how he views them. And I don't understand it because when he says who deserves protection, I think that the pretty clear answer is everybody don't we have an amendment that guarantees equal protection yeah without asterisks yeah i feel like he's like what minorities deserve protection the whole point of like the bill of rights is that minorities need protection all of them and he's and we're not talking about pederasts because we have laws against that right we're talking about people who are marginalized, who are not doing bad things. So, 
Yes, he's an idiot. And I think Frank and I referred to him, well, I won't <laughs> tar Frank with this. I've referred to him as a balloon full of marinara. Yes, you did. Which is a racial slur, and it, that's on me, <laughs> right? I have a complicated relationship with Italians. Indeed. Um, <laughs> but as a, can I just say, as a gay man, if you want to set my blood to a feverish boil, just constantly make that absolutely flippant, absolutely casual connection between gay men and pedophiles. Right, yeah. Just without without even breaking a sweat. Oh, yeah, well, there's a, you know. Yeah. You can't have them be scoutmasters because they're going to fuck all. It's like, who who are we going to protect next? You are just rapists throwing a huge population in with what this society right. considers, you know, one of the baser crimes. The worst thing you can be. Certainly one of them. But I would say that, I mean, mo I would say most people, if you polled them, they would say that, that a pederast, a child molester, would be worse than a murderer. Uh, probably. I would say that it, they're basically, yes, exactly. It elicits a, a, a very visceral reaction in people. But what you're saying, if I got you right, <laughs> it, yes. somehow you're trying to make the claim that when someone compares you to that, right. it's bad? I mean, it's 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 nuanced. Like, like you try to tease like it, that. Try to tease it out. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, 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 I'm trying way to, out over my skis on this one. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why that hurts your feelings. So this is this is the weirdest thing. My unified field theory of the Scalian <laughs> right wing <laughs> okay. mind. Right, is that they they have the real problem they have with all of this. The real the real blind spot is they have a problem with consent. Hmm. So two gay men, two gay women, I don't give a fuck. They're the same age, but if they're of legal age right. and they consent, three gay men, four straight men, you know, and a right. banana, I don't care. Who, right. who fucking cares? Right. Because those people can consent. Right. To whatever, sensually or And otherwise. as long as they are, yeah. then sh get your nose out of it. But why consent is such a sticky wicket for for people like Scalia is because consent basically is a concept where you grant that everybody has the ability to say no to you mm. right that people of lesser station as you see as you see life's pyramid yeah people so for Scalia that's everybody so that's women that's children that's animals that's why they always go from uh, if you let gay people get married you can go what's next you marry your horse well yeah well, they don't. They don't understand consent. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> well, it's so for funny. them that slippery slope is in view. What, what you're what you're re referencing reminds me of uh, a meme that went around uh, where it's it it says the myth of consensual sex. Consensuals in quotation marks, <sighs> and it's got a picture of three people, uh, a man and a woman. The man is uh, shirtless. The woman is. Uh, not, but like they're 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 clearly like playfully frisky, mm. sexually, right, with each other. And the man has a little bubble above his uh, his mouth, his head that says "I consent," and the woman has a little bubble above her mouth that says "I consent." And then the third person is Jesus, oh. and he's got a little bubble that says "I don't." Oh my god! <laughs> and there's and then at the bottom it says, "Is there somebody you forgot to ask?" That's amazing. I think that is what we're getting at here. What we're truly getting at is that Antonin Scalia and his his right-wing nutjob cohorts, yeah. and I have nothing... This isn't about politics. This isn't about right-wing being bad. This is about these guys not able to understand that their religion is what's guiding all of their, all of their decisions here, and they're not allowed to. Right, and then they back it into some kind of legal right. uh, circular logic that is so bizarre. Right. But they're like... One and done. Yeah, they make their they they, they run some end run around their yeah. own logic until yeah. they get to something that sounds legalistic, that sounds yeah. like it might make sense in the law, and that's what they base it on. But the truth of the matter is that what they're actually saying is Jesus doesn't consent to this. Yeah, I, I think that's it, but I also think it's about it's about Christian male privilege. Yeah. And you don't and, and children are not allowed to tell you no. Yeah. Girls are not allowed to tell you no. How dare they? Right. Question the way the, the, the fucking ladder works, the right. way the pyramid works. And so... Right. And boys who like other boys are basically girls. Right. They count as girls. Well, and they just see it all as this, this sexual free-for-all that there is no stopping. Yeah. 
I have a I have a little kitty cat that I love more than life itself. And if the house catches on fire, Jesse's on his own. I'm grabbing her and getting her out. <laughs> and until all these people like Scalia and these other assholes kept connecting everything to bestiality, I never thought about sex with my cat. No, no. Until they s- wouldn't stop talking about it. I'm like, get and, out of you assholes. And now it's all you can think about. Man. <laughs> it's all I can think about. So thanks, Fat Tony. Yeah, I... Uh... God, I I just don't get it. But there you go. That he's one of the most important humans in this country. Well, I'm sorry that neither of us had much of an opinion about that story, guys. Yeah, we we that one kind of fell flat. <laughs> that was that was a brick. <laughs> so I just thought we'd round out all of that awfulness with a, a a little story right here in our backyard. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, close to our backyard, nearby. Okay. In Idaho. Hmm. There is a there is a particularly uh, awful madrasa called BYU Idaho <laughs> that is a very god bothered uh, school in in a religious fervor not seems since maybe Salem yeah so <sighs> but they are Mormons so they're at least nice about it until they actually say stuff yeah there's a there's a little smile on the face of all that awfulness so yeah <clears throat> you know we've we've talk a lot in the past few episodes about how uh gay marriage has just left it's caused a lot of heartburn Mm -hmm. for pardon me for the mormons and their flock yes and not all of their flock uh some of their flock so pardon me so they came out with this terrible policy saying that the the children of of Gay people will be punished unto the twelfth generation and nigh unto hell, and <laughs> and then kind of backtracked. Is that the exact wording? It is. It's okay. the fine print. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and backtracked very clumsily from that, uh, just an inch. And then um, what was the other thing they did? Oh, the judge who I, I believe is a bishop in Price, Utah, who uh-huh. took the tried to take the foster baby away from the parents from, from the lesbians. Yeah, even though knew, but he was asking for that to happen. Right. He's and so he's recused himself uh, from that. He stepped down from the case, which is he, which is lovely. Now that they can get their baby back, and everybody's everybody's wishes can be fulfilled and, and, except Jesus. And speaking of a jurist who feels like they the only word in their law book is Jesus, right? And then you just cut and paste to build a little paragraph around that, right? So good for him. Good he backed away from that and didn't destroy a family for no fucking reason, right? Though. Exactly. So now they just can't stop. So B- oh, no. Can't stop, won't stop. BYU-Idaho <laughs> was caught uh, holding a a conference on uh, reparative – what is called reparative therapy. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is so discredited in this country. Yeah, it's it's completely – like, first of all, okay, so it's still, like, being done. There are still places yes. in the country that do – Right what here is in no- Utah. What is yeah. known as reparative therapy, which is we cure the gays of being gay by uh, very effective means that do nothing. Right. Do nothing. Well, no. They do something. They really, really damage the people. Yeah, that they ruin. Doing. They ruin people's lives. They really, really hurt people. Right. So so at least there's that. There is there is some upside to this, but none yeah. of that upside is that they end up being straight. Right. And, and John DeLynn, who is a, another uh, podcaster and a, and a really excellent uh you know, therapist, etc. He interviewed for the church when he was still allowed to be in the church. Right before he got all uppity, he interviewed over a thousand people, men and women, who had been through church-sponsored reparative therapy. Mm-hmm. What percentage of success did he did they have? A thousand people. Uh, let's see. So one percent would be uh, ten people. Is that correct? Sure. Uh, zero. Zero. <laughs> If you can't, if your therapy doesn't work for one in a thousand people, your therapy doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So, so here's the plucky little BYU Idaho. Uh, <laughs> they're they're the little college that can't, that can't and shouldn't. Um, so flee for your lives if you're there. But they passed out in in Mormon sacrament meetings, which is a church service, in the fl- in the program that says what the week's songs will be and who's speaking. Right. There was a flyer for this event. Oh my God. So it was official. I mean, well, it that's, was... That's it, their first mistake right there. It was an official... Well, why is that? Because there aren't any gay people in church. You don't print something. Right. Then it gets out. Then you it gotta, gets You've got to keep it through word of mouth. Yeah. So they have... And, and the flyer apparently said, and this is hilarious, 
that people can and do overcome same gender attraction and enjoy rich, full lives with marriage partners of the opposite sex without regrets. I have a thousand people that will differ with you on that. <laughs> right, right. Now, I can say that I know one guy who I believe, and I've talked about him on my on the show. He's a friend. Mm. Uh, his name is uh, Josh Weed. He's famous, so I just use, I'll just use his name because he's, he's cool with that. He's cool with it. I mean, he's you know, all you have to do is Google gay man, uh, gay Mormon man in marriage, and you'll find him. Or, uh, or gay it, Mormon weed. Right. Well, <laughs> you'll find... A, See what you get. Various things. Yeah. Various and sundry. Right. Uh, but he is married to a woman. Uh, he's, they're both dear friends of mine, and I believe that they are happy people who have a happy marriage. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't shy away from the fact well, that he's gay. He uses the word gay. He doesn't shy away from it. Uh, so that, there's one. That's his primary attraction, but he, but he has just sort of... Uh, made that not primary in his choices. Well, you know, because Mormons don't distinguish between gay, bi, like any of the, any of the other colors of the rainbow. Is he, maybe he was bisexual and Nope. No. Nope, he's gay and 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 he's a therapist and he he knows his stuff and he's actually very uh open and honest with his wife and and mm. and you know, he's amazing, but he is and he is the first to say this, not the rule, he is an exception. Sure. And most and he freely admits most gay men couldn't pull this off, right? Uh, and and shouldn't. And is he so? Is he still an active Mormon? Is that the the is. motivation? That's the I, entire motivation. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so it is possible, but it's <clears throat> but reparative therapy. He's the first to say is atrocious and would not work. It is atrocious, and you cannot make someone yeah. not gay. You can't. Yeah. The 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 people I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> he's tried making me not gay, which is really weird because he's trying to seduce me. But I'm like, but it's like it's, it's like a guy on guy. But thing, don't so. make it. I want to make love to you, but not in a gay way. Yeah, let's not make it weird, bro. Don't, don't make it a gay thing. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. So yeah, the guys who survived this, the generation older than me, you know, the guys yeah. who went through BYU and had genital electroshock. But it wasn't. I mean, God, there are guys that are our age and younger that still have still gone do it. This. But it was really a strong program at BYU. Right. Yes, in the early '80s, and, and they were so confident that they had that. They had it wired. They yeah. had it locked in. Yeah, literally wired. And and those guys are in rough shape. They're yeah. in really rough shape. They, they are. Have, and so we talked a little bit about how these poor Mormons just can't stop the gay hate. And it's 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 kind of like they, this is these are people who just cannot tell which way the wind is blowing in the world. Right. And so it's like they whip their dick out, point it in the wind, start pissing, <laughs> and then wonder why there's pee all over their pants. <laughs> yeah. It's the feminists. It's, they, <laughs> they're ruining everything. This is someone else's fault. Yeah, exactly. So knock it off, guys. Oh, my God. So what happened? Did, did, they're doing this, this. No, they called it off. They called it off. They called it off. They called it off. And the, and the official church and the both. This is hilarious. The official church, the bishop of that ward had to allow those flyers to go in there. Okay. Right. The official church said, we don't, we don't have nothing to do with this. And BYU-Idaho is like, oh, we're just letting them use a room. Um, baloney. So it's all been, you know, so, so they're, they're, everyone's trying to take three steps back from this thing and just point at somebody else. Yeah. I, I think the problem is the, the church's entire PR department is probably in the emergency room right they're now. They're currently taken. Yeah. They're, they're, they're in use right now. They're preoccupied. So <laughs> yeah, it's been called off. It's, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm glad I live long enough to see this kind of reaction to this gobbledygook yeah thank god i mean yeah. at least at least i mean the church has already acknowledged the church as a as the centralized ignore, organization has acknowledged that reparative therapy doesn't work doesn't work and that homosexuality is not a choice right officially right that it is a state of being right it is an innate part of their nature an evil evil state of being so like just, i was uh, just yeah. just a, a purely evil like bestiality invo involuntary thing that you are and cannot help and is bad yeah. So I went to the the big mass resignation last week, mm. which was cool downtown Salt Lake. Oh, and it was big too. I'm big. shocked that we're not actually doing that as one of our stories. Let's just mention that there was a huge yeah. mass resignation from the Mormon Church based on this whole uh, yeah. this whole gay thing. Seventeen hundred people at least resigned. The, the line went around the block for these people to turn in their letters, which is shocking. Actually, I've seen events like this before for various and sundry. And there's other dozens. Things. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's like there's like you know. Maybe 35 people showed up, yep. and six of them are actually mailing in a letter. Yep. This was not like that. This was huge. And 
And I just I want to give a quick shout out if I can as a gay man who who grew up under all this shout. agony that I you know I I walked around there with my husband we resigned pro, you know we've all we both resigned before so we were there to support and sure. we just all the people standing in line there were tons of young people but really what there was mostly was just folks mm. you know and it was just older couples had been in the church their whole lives and this was just more than they could stomach and I just I, I again as a gay man I want to give a shout out to just the regular people uh, it feels like a different place yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. And so thanks, everybody, for being so cool. That's amazing. I, you know, I will say this. Uh, the church-owned newspaper, we have two major newspapers in this town, uh, the Salt Lake Tribune, which is the non-church-owned one, yeah. and then the Deseret News, which is the one that's owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. The headlines were slightly different <laughs> about about that event. What? Yeah. The headline for the Deseret News, and I looked this up specifically because I really wanted to see how they were oh. covering it, was basically basically what it says. I don't remember the exact wording, but what it basically said was, bunch of people who are already not going to church resign from the church. Right. Which I'm going to say is probably true. Probably like Most true. of them weren't, uh, haven't been active members for a long time, and this was just a good reason to actually take their names off of the rolls. Yeah, I know several people who are in that boat. Yeah, they haven't been considered themselves Mormons for decades. Yeah, but they're you know they didn't they don't want to take their names off the rolls because it would hurt mom's feelings. And a lot of times they just much. don't think of it. They stop going to church. Yeah, and then something like this happens, and you're like, oh shit, my name's still on the record. Right, they're associating themselves. They they're using my name to for this bigotry. Yeah, but nevertheless, uh, it still counts. Yeah, it's still and, and, important. And, and I know of some people that were church-going members who just said, I, I can't, my butt in the pew validates this this policy, and I got to walk away. Yeah. So good good on you, Utah. Yeah, exactly. You make me happy. Oh, I wish we were ending on that note. I've got one more story. That oh, was shit, really? That was bad timing on our part, but I'll just tell it anyway. Uh, Anywho, uh, I'm taking us to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh, the Packers. Um, is that a sport? That is a sport. Packing. I did it. Packing is a sport. I did it. You figured out a sport. <laughs> Um, in the NFL, that's the National Football League. Yeah, okay. For our international listeners, we have a different game called football than what you have called football. Football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but um, so the NFL paid tribute to the uh, the Paris uh, the people who lost their lives in the Paris attacks mm. uh, by having uh, a lot of their teams had moments of silence before the game. Very nice. Apparently, in Green Bay, the moment of silence was uh, disrupted. By a a fan yelling something not nice about Muslims. Oh, just one guy. Yeah, apparently. well, that's. I I think we count that as a win. If right. Just one guy in Wisconsin <laughs> said something terrible at an NFL game. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I will say this uh, to his credit. Uh, Green Bay Packers uh, quarterback Aaron Rodgers uh, was against that. Was opposed to that. Did he throw the football at him and just? Boing. No, but he did later say that he was uh, very disappointed with whoever the fan was that made the comment, uh, mm. and that it was—he said it was in- inappropriate. What is the comment? Can you say it? Uh, I don't have it. Uh. I did look for it uh, and didn't find it in uh, any of my immediate sources. Oh, okay. Who cares? Yeah, he, it was not nice. We'll just go with that. So that's cool. So he, in a press conference, he... Yeah, he said, he said, quote, it's that kind of prejudicial ideology, and I apparently can't say words, so he did better than I did. This it's, is from a footballer? Yeah, he's, it's that kind of prejudicial ideology that puts us in the position we are today as a world. Wow. So there you go. Good uh, for him. Go, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I'm going to call him that from now on. I like that idea. Green Bay Packers... Uh, quarterback Mr. Rogers is uh, is calling them out. I used to I used to live I I spent nine months in Wisconsin. Oh yeah, and the closest big city, which was so not close that we never went there because it was too far, was Green Bay. Oh really? Yeah. Where were you? Uh, way north, like up on the near the border of Upper Michigan. If we have any Upper listeners out oh, there, oh okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I did, I, I worked up there in the winter and it was, uh, that shit's real. Yeah. I, and that, it is so cold. I would hate a Muslim. <laughs> it's, it's cold enough to hate a Muslim yeah. out here. Drive a man to drink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yep. Actually, I find that cold is what cures hatred because it's too cold to hate. Yeah. Right? That's why the Canadians are so nice. I had a, I had a wonderful conversation with this great guy I was working with in Canada and he was just 
l- wanting to talk about why America was so insane. Uh huh. And he said, and he put it the same way. He's like, Canada, we can't do that. He's like, it's too cold. We're agrarian socialists, and we have to get along. Yeah, to get through the winter. And I'm like, that's a really beautiful way to put it. It's true. I, you know, I one of my cousins moved so far north. Uh, I think Whitehorse, uh, Yellowknife. Yellowknife's up there. One of those. One of those color uh, towns. Do you know who's from Yellowknife, Canada? I don't. Margot Kidder. <laughs> It's Lois Lane herself? Yeah. From Yellowknife, Canada. <laughs> You're uh, welcome, everyone. Yeah. Canada fact. There's your there's your good Canada. And I'll tell you what. Canadians all know who's from Canada, mm-hmm. uh, in case you're wondering. Everyone on TV. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> anyway, so my cousin lives all the way up north. And I'll tell you how far up north this is. Yeah. Uh, my Her dad, who is my actual cousin... Uh, lives in in calgary which mm. is which is a, a piece in it's up there uh, from the border yep. it's and she uh, his daughter lives so far north of that that it's actually as far north as mexico is south from calgary from calgary holy balls uh and so he was telling so my cousin was telling me a story is this about how you rebel visiting. in canada <laughs> it is actually i'm well, going north dad yeah Screw you! I'm going where it's crazy cold. There's no more north, honey. And and literally, it's it's you know it's so far away from anything that if you see someone broken down on the side of the road, you either help them or you know that they're going to die. Yeah, it's like probably legally required to help them. If but they're Canadians, they're going to do it anyway. It's not legally. I, I yeah, I don't know that there's a legal requirement, but you just do it because you know that like that person has no options. Right. You're you're done. Well, if it's that hot new prime minister, everybody's going to stop to oh, him change a tire. I'll, I'll pull over to take you where bow, you're bow, going. Bow. Anyway, uh, if you guys want to chime in on any of this stuff that we've been talking about, you listeners out there, you certainly can. Um, we have an email address, which is podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Uh, also, call into the voicemail. We will hopefully be able to actually play those next starting next week when Frank comes back because I, I actually don't have access to those. Um, so 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 call and let us hear your pretty little voice. Uh, the number is four two four six 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 eight four four two. And but uh, if you're stuck on the side of the road, uh, Northern Canada, don't call that number because nobody no. picks up. That number is not useful to you. Yeah. Or just call it and tell us all about how that feels to be stuck on the side. And, of the and road. we'll we'll alert your family. Call nine one one first. Right. Then call us. Um, <laughs> we won't alert your family. That is not what we do. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, also go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI atheist. And when you've, after you've clicked like on that, then you can go and search for the TGIA members only lounge also on Facebook. And, uh, it, actually the truth is one of the things that I do when I'm trying to vet you, if I'm, if, if I, if I have any questions, I go to your likes and I see who you've liked. And if you've liked us, you're automatically in. That's a guarantee. So uh so seems fair yeah do that um we're gonna go listen to one of our favorites uh he, uh, a mormon himself a convert to the mormon church yep um one mr gleneth t beck in stein <sighs> glendolyn beck glendolyn beckovich uh who has some more prognosticating to do the march towards fascism will hasten Quite honestly, I think this is going to help Donald Trump because Donald Trump is tapping into anger. Not to say that Donald Trump is a fascist. I'm just saying that anyone who taps into the anger, into the Bubba effect, will in time go through the roof. Conditions also, I have been saying this for a while. I hate even saying this, but I'm telling you, I have a very strong feeling that next year will be 1968 all over again. We are going to be ripe for assassinations. Massive instability is coming our way. Might be next year, might be 24 months, it might never happen. I don't know. We have a pretty good track record. Uh... (laughs) We have a pretty good track record. We have a pretty good track record. I'm trying to figure out what he's referring to there. Because I... Because is he saying that is he saying we as in sort of the royal we we here at my show have a good track record of predicting we, what's going to be happening? In they the next... do have a good track record. It is unbroken. <laughs> they have never been right about anything. Well, I think they have a really good track record of just making predictions and then ignoring them later. 
Right. It's That's not, their track record. Right. It's not being correct or incorrect. It's just they have a really good track record yeah. of making a lot of predictions. It's like a comedian who's who's really good at just setting up a joke but never says the punchline. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're, they're good that way. Yeah, yeah. That great that great old comedian that great old stand-up line. How many people does it take to go into a thing? How many? Anyway, <laughs> Which uh, is almost funny. Which is almost funny. So uh, I, th- I think he's saying they, that the United States has a very good track record of assassination. And he said it with such uh, gravity. I just, know. I liked the pause that he did uh, uh, before, before saying, oh, I don't like to say this. Yeah. You know, in the next year or so, I. <sighs> you should see his face when he does it, too. Because I hate he, to say it. It's kind of like. <sighs> Do I dare even say what I know? Dare I even reveal yeah. to you people what has been revealed to me? I think this is how most of history's great men speak, <laughs> right? Like him and, uh-huh. and the skipper on uh, Gilligan's Island also <laughs> seemed to know that he was, you know. I thought you said the word skipper and I thought there's no way he's going to Gilligan on this one. I'm always going to Gilligan. Oh, my God. Yeah. There you go. Well, that man's a cuckoo bird. So that was just a little extension of us kicking Mormons around today because he's he's another one. He's a, yeah, I guess. I, I don't know how happy they really are to claim him, though. Oh, I know several who who don't don't claim him one bit. Right. Who are just like, no, he's not he's not one of us. I, I seem to recall a sto- uh, hearing a story that, that Temple Square kind of called him one time and said, you make sure you never say this that is, you are speaking for us. Right. Right. I believe that. And then he probably turned it into, well, you know, when I spoke directly with the people of the church, <laughs> right. the prophet of the church, uh, here's, what, here's what he had to say. Although officially, from official shit, I don't know how he's any different, but whatever. Right. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. He, he, but he does make predictions. He does. He does like predictions. Okay. So if there's an assassination in the next 12 months, oh, maybe 24, or maybe never. Yeah. Then, then we'll, he's right. Then we'll know that he was right. That's, and we will owe you, we'll, we'll eat our hats, Glenn. Yeah. I, I have a prediction to make, too. Uh, I believe that the whole, that the sky will turn purple for a month, uh, either in a year or two years right. or never. Huh. Okay. And if that does or doesn't happen, yeah, you're a prophet. You guys will know that I can predict amazing things. <sighs> Boy, I, that's a big risk you're taking. But Yeah, I, I'm sticking my neck I out. I can for see sure. the fire in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some people wrote in to us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what they had to say now. Um, J- Jen A wrote in. I, I don't know actually how to pronounce this spelling. Jen A, I'm going to guess. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, wrote in to say, hey, guys. Wanted to say that I agree with you 100% about how annoying it is when we see black and white thinking from fellow atheists, especially when it comes to doctrinal purity. Uh, Dawkins is a great example. The selfish gene had a huge impression on me back in the day, and I'm grateful for all of his contributions. That said, I wish the dude would stop tweeting, uh, (laughs) as he has occasional terrible ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've said that many times. However, I take exception to using Greta Christina's, quote, atheist leaders who are not Dawkins or Harris series as an example of that. If you read the, an introduction to those posts, uh, the point of them is not to disavow either of them entirely, meaning Dawkins and Her- or mm-hmm. Harris. Uh, instead, the whole point is that when the media talks about atheism as a movement, they inevitably turn to people like Dawkins and Harris as though they are the leaders and as though they, sh- they speak for us. However, uh, there are many times uh, there are many, many more activists who are in leadership positions of various organizations uh, who have many different perspectives. Uh, She says from the intro to these posts, when media when a media outlet decides that atheism is important, they all too often turn to Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris. Then when Dawkins or Harris put their foot in their mouth uh, about race or gender again, uh, the, um, the reporter cries out, atheism needs better leadership. Why doesn't atheism have better leaders? Atheism does have better leaders. So I've pro- profiled eight of them to bring just a small fragment of the range and variety of atheist leadership to more people's attention. Uh, so she says, so uh, Janae says, uh, you might be able to make a case that Christina is guilty of doctrinal purity thinking. And I wouldn't be, even be surprised uh, or I wouldn't even be that surprised. But I don't think that this series makes that case. Uh, I think of it as a public service to the media and to us atheists to broaden the perspective on the movement and its leaders. Huh. 
So I think that that's a fair point. I do too. And I don't think, and I don't think that I was trying to make the case that 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 specifically was what. I mean, I think it was clumsy. I was being very clumsy when I brought that up. So thank you for for pointing that out. Yeah, because I, I because I mean, and I I will say that I have seen Greta. Uh, you know, I've met her. She's she I she was a delightful person. Uh, but I have seen her. I think uh, apply doctrinal purity tests that I don't think are fair or reasonable. Yeah. Um, that it's just happened. It doesn't mean that she's, I mean, it would be, uh, the height of hypocrisy for me to say that, you know, because of that, she's not atheist enough and shouldn't be in the movement or something. Right, right, right. I, but you weren't saying that. That's not what I was saying. No, you weren't saying that at all. But I, I think that Janai makes a good point mm-hmm. that, uh, it's a very good point that there is a, a lazy press. Mm-hmm. That is like the only – you need better leaders, but the only leaders we're ever going to call are these two guys who are imperfect leaders. Because we know their names. Right. right. And so it's kind of this self-fulfilling – And maybe Dave Silverman, uh, because his organization says American Atheists. Yeah, because and... he's Googleable. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, I think that's a smart point. Yep. So thanks for that. Uh, hi, Frank and Dan, uh, and as of late, Mark. So you, you made it into the, the hello. I don't think you should read that email. <laughs> well, Deleted. I'm a gonna. All right. Uh, this is from Rachel. Uh, Rachel says, "Oh, excuse me." Rachel says, "I'm writing today about two separate and unrelated things." And this is a bit of a long email, so I'm going to truncate. Race it. Uh, Race through it. Uh, she she says, uh, first, I've noticed that anytime you read an email from someone of, with a gender ambiguous name, you spend some time speculating on what the gender of that person might be." Mm. Um, she points out that uh, this can be uh, tricky uh, for when when dealing with a person of the T part of the LGBT community. Yeah. Um, and not just that. You know, I, I'm going to say it's not just about trans people. It's also, a, you know, there are gender fluid people. There are people for whom gender doesn't work as a construct uh, or at least a binary view right. of, of gender. And there are also names that are just kind of hard, but, but continue. Right. And so she says... She says um, uh, she suspects that the last few sentences, uh, or oh, she says, I bet that your focus on the gender of your writers has more to do with wanting to respect your writer by using the appropriate pronouns. That's correct. Uh, yes, absolutely. That's what it is. Uh, to that point, my suggestion is to go neutral by using they, their, and them. Uh, this is an option that works well and is still grammatically correct. Um, so she says the the example being, you know, my friend is running late to the party. They will be here at 645. Sure. And I get that. I just wish it was a better gen- a neutral. I want to use a neutral. I, it, But the writer in me really struggles because that's so – it's so sloppy and gross. And yeah. I wish we had a good, decent, gender neutral way of talking. I do too. And And, and I find it very, very – difficult to refer to a human being as an it right or uh, and i know that's not what's being asked but uh you know it it seems like uh, for me it comes from a place of respect i just want to know how they want to be understood right but right? and 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 i just find it sloppy to i you're right that it's becoming more okay to use they and them yeah but those the, but that is a plural those are plural words and it's right. trick. It's hard for me to use it for just a singular person, but you're right. It, it, that's what I should do. They and them. Yeah, it, it makes it easier, uh, and I'll try on that. Her second point was that was this, she, and I I wanted to read this because it's it's apropos of what we were talking about before. Um, she said, uh, "My mom has decided to resign from the LDS Church." Woo-hoo. She was a devout member of the church her whole life, but eventually started to have issues with the doctrine and history of the church to the point where uh, the, she, she, uh, the phrase that she likes to use is that she studied her way out of the church. Uh, perfect. Uh, in the mid-90s. Yeah. Um, she makes that clarification because whenever members from the LDS church come by to, quote, reactivate her, they often erroneously assume that someone at her last ward offended her. Uh, she chooses. She chose to remain a member of the church uh, on paper because she did not want to hurt the feelings of her devout mother, my grandmother. Well, this week my mom decided that what the church did finally trumped her, my grandmother's feelings. My mother submitted her res- resignation letter on Saturday. Fucking a. Yeah, indeed, it, that is an interesting one. Boy, boy, the Mormons have this story that anyone who leaves the church falls into one of I think three categories. 
The big one being they were offended by something someone did. And that is often true. Yeah, I don't know that it's true in the way that they think it's true. They think that someone in the ward said something mean. Right. And that that put them off of Mormonism because, entirely. Right, because what they don't want to admit is what Rachel's is the case of Rachel's mother right. that just more information and more knowledge made it impossible to be a Mormon. Right. Someone did say something that offended her, and that something was all of the things that don't make any sense. <laughs> the entire canon of Mormonism. Right, yeah. And it's it's carefully whitewashed history. Yeah. 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 So good. So going back to the first question just really quickly. Oh, sure. I am I, I'm extremely interested in understanding more about She's talking about trans people, mm. you know, about that spectrum. And a, have you ever interviewed a trans person on the show? I don't know that. We, no, we haven't ever talked because that could be a really fascinating conversation with a, a couple people to kind of. I know we have trans listeners. Uh, yeah. So. So, yeah, maybe if you guys know. Well, uh, no, I will say this. I have interviewed a trans person on the show. Ah. However, that trans person had not come out yet as trans. Oh. And so uh, that was at that time. Uh, Dave Moscato, now Danielle Moscato. Oh, but we we had, but not the subject wasn't trans. No, that wasn't issues. the subject at all. She was just at that time the uh, the head of PR and marketing for American Atheists. So we just had her on the show. Oh right. Oh I, yeah, I know who she is. Anyway, so, oh cool. So I've had we have had a trans person on the show. We just didn't know it at the time. <laughs> right. Right. Anyway, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll give her a ring and just see if she wants to come back on and. She she hesitated for a while to talk about trans issues, sure, because her focus was on atheist issues. She didn't want that to become the focus. Well, and she just and, as the spokesperson. Well, and she was she very rightly pointed out she didn't know a lot all of the trans issues yet. Right, but there are other trans people that are in the atheist community who have been trans for a lot longer and who have who have actually dealt with that. Maybe I should I'll make I'll try to remember to make an effort. If I remember, I'll remind you. I would I would love to hear that conversation yes. or be part of that conversation. Yeah, I know a couple of people who are very who are very active in the in the atheist community and are also trans, right. and and that that could be very useful because because you know you've got a microphone and can be instrumental in making it right. And yeah. so yeah, yeah, why don't you do something for once, for fuck's sake, for, for once, for the not, people? Why don't I just make something okay? Do something for they. Uh, Matt also wrote into us. Matt said Mark was on to something, but didn't have it quite right. Uh, this is a reference to a conversation we had last week mm. in which we were talking about uh, Darwin. You recall we talked a little oh, bit yeah. about I, Darwin. Yes. I'll, bet I did, I'll bet I didn't get it quite right because I'm on sh a slightly shaky ground. Yeah, well, we were, there. and we, we had mentioned, you know, I had said I think he was Christian. You had said uh, you thought that he, he w stopped being Christian. That's, that, that was my understanding. Right. So here's what, Mark, or what Matt says. He says, Darwin was effectively a religious man his whole life. In the letters Mark mentioned, he, effect he effectively renounced Christianity. Uh, that's two effectively in the opposite direction. Super effective. <laughs> he renounced Christianity, citing the complete lack of evidence, but also stated that he found the idea of a universe without a God to be deeply disturbing. Hmm. In another letter, he said he fits at best as an agnostic, but also professed several deistic leanings. Uh, probably the best summary is that he died not a Christian, but still very confused. <laughs> uh, also, uh, he wanted. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is a about the story that I did about magnets oh, use, using love, mag yeah. magnetizing what what we were joking around about because it was the it was the uh, middle it was the back middle front right. of the brain it was the lateral medial upper down it was the right. frontal bit the posterior posterior medial prefrontal cortex center yeah exactly yeah. Uh, he says a note on that the prefrontal cortex is at the very front of the brain and is used for higher level integration and personality traits it is the part they scramble during a lobotomy or sever during a leucotomy medial me means the center part uh, which is considered laterally. Posterior means the rear. Yeah, we got all that. Oh, well, he says they are effectively... What the uh, fuck, college boy? Why'd you write in? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, it's the cent laterally central rear part of the front cortex, of the frontal cortex, the prefrontal. <sighs> Brains are confusing. Yeah, exactly. It's the front middle back of the front. It's so, the middle back of the front. Yeah, it's both sides of the middle, but on the back. Oh, fuck, yeah. Anyway, thanks. For, yeah, he says he says what they are they are effectively inactive inactivating the rear center portion of the prefrontal cortex. Uh, I'm not sure that's any clearer. I'm not sure it is. 
He's, he does point out, the, and I didn't point this out, that the, uh, the magnetic uh, therapy that they were doing, it's not really a therapy. It's just transient. As soon as they stop, as soon as they turn off the magnet, the effect is gone. And he says, uh, if you want a permanent effect, you would need them all to wear anti-religion magneto helmets all the time or get in there with legit surgical tools. I got no problem with either of those. <laughs> <laughs> because they but, can look nice. You could have a you, there could be a, yeah. a fashion line. How cool would you look? Yeah. Anyway, he says what is interesting about the study is that it pretty conclusively shows that religiosity is just a state of brain chemistry. Of course it is. Of course it is. Every, isn't everything? I mean, I'm asking the the writer honestly. Isn't everything that we every perception and understanding of the world we have? Well, yeah, and but this, and the, and the but self. the propensity toward belief in something. Uh, pre-natural or supernatural or unnatural uh is uh, it's a propensity that we are actually genetically programmed toward and it is a brain function right it is a it is an actual like it's not it's not like you came to that conclusion because you weighed all of the evidence <laughs> you came to that conclusion because your brain's like i gotta believe it yeah and if you didn't then someone offended you right correct right absolutely correct so right. the, the, the 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 moral of the story is Magnets on all the time. All magnets all the time. That's right. And and frankly, just just point it at randomly at people's heads and hope for the best. At whole regions. Right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh thank you all for for your uh your kind writings in. Uh we sure do appreciate that. Let's move on, shall we, to to a discussion that I will admit I am a little apprehensive about. Yeah, same here. I um but I think it's a super necessary discussion and yeah. and I think that that we've seen since this horrible event in Paris uh, people of good conscience kind of flailing. Yeah. A little bit. There has been a bit of flailing. Uh, yeah. And people of bad conscience being quite certain about everything. Right. Well, right, yes. There there's a lot of very 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 certain people. Yeah. Um and then there's there's people that you wouldn't expect to be uh, making certain uh, statements who are making those statements, and it's a little alarming. So, so why don't you launch us in? Why, okay, lead, lead us in if you so, will. So, I, I think everyone was was you know rightly horrified to wake up to yet another, or well, I don't know. We were waking up to it. I think it was kind of happening when most of us were awake, wasn't it? Um, right. Anyway, the the. Uh, the horror that that unfolded in Paris with the coordinated attacks uh, that are being claimed by the Islamic State in uh, Iraq and Syria, ISIS, uh, 129, I think, this as of today, I can't remember how many, 135 maybe, mm. and s several hundred injured, uh, uh, and a lot, you know, in, in the midst of so many other crises like the civil war in Syria that is driving just a a tidal wave of humanity into Europe and across the Mediterranean and and you know reactions vary right <laughs> so i i thought it would be important this week to try to <clears throat> talk about you know uh, that a it's kind of okay to be conflicted about a lot of this stuff sure but b how a you know what are the what are the ethical c conundrums what are the ethical conversations that uh skeptics atheists um largely a lot probably a lot of liberal people but certainly some conservative people who are in the skeptical and atheist community mm. uh lovers of liberty lovers of human rights uh how we can kind of square this circle of how frightening an event like this is um, and destabilizing it can be and how terrible overreacting <laughs> poorly can be. Oh my God. So one of the things, so one of the things that I've been seeing a lot of is people posting what, what, what has happened is suddenly everybody is posting about uh, Obama bringing in the refugees. Yeah. And what are we bringing in like 10,000 or something to a country of, 350 million people right but each one of those 10,000 man woman and child yes might be a terrorist we are importing terrorists onto our own soil yes we are idiots and we have all the terrorists we need that are born here well that's i mean that's we'll get to that point. i mean we dispatched tim mcveigh but there's others yeah the three popped up where he was left behind yeah uh 
it's it is amazing to see how much like how and and you know if you're if you're in the members only lounge on Facebook, uh, everybody sort of reposts the hate that they see from their feed, and just so that they can get it off their chest and say the things that they wish they could say to the assholes who are posting these things. Yeah, without starting World War Three. Right, exactly. Um, so you know you see people like. All you know, people who are talking about you know, we'll take their their people once. What about dealing with our homeless? We've got homeless children here. Right. We can't. We're not even taking care of them. Why? How can we take care of ten thousand Syrian refugees? Which is like interesting because they don't give a fuck about the homeless. Three hundred sixty-four yeah. days of the right. year. Right. And then uh, and then on that leap year, they suddenly have a day where they well, care about. And to this, in the same way that. You know, they won't they won't dare. Uh, I don't know if the word is criticized, but their comments on homegrown gun massacres are a little nuanced. Mm. But yeah. as, as long as they happen overseas, they've got very strong opinions about what that shit is. Well, and it's like, yeah, everything's everything's a uh, very new. Everything's very tricky when somebody's white, but when somebody's right. brown and they blow something up, it's black and white. It's, right. It is as it is as cut and dry as it could possibly yeah. be. Yeah, so you know, I think here's what I here's my take, a broad take on Islam mm. in the modern world. I don't think Mormonism is really cut out for the modern world, right? <laughs> okay, so they and we just talked a, a, quite a bit about their very desperate struggles to make sense of it themselves. Yeah, I certainly think Islam is not really fitting everywhere comfortably into the modern world. Now there are 1.6 billion Muslims, yeah. so it's a thing. It's real. There are a lot of people who profess that faith to one degree or another. Yes, and in a large spectrum. Yeah, there are Sufis, there are Wahhabis, there are these guys like ISIS, the Salafis. You know, there are inactive Muslims. There yeah. are uh, there are all sorts. So. You you see these cries, f and we can come back to that. But you see these cries for you know we, uh, peaceful Muslims need to apologize for this. You know peaceful mm. Muslims need to denounce this. And it's like okay, well, as long as I can drive down the street to any church after you know a kid shoots up nine, you know a Christian white boy shoots up nine people in Charleston, right, and demand the congregation apologize for that, right. So that make all the sense that makes is exactly fucking none. Yeah. Right, and I'm sure no one is more horrified by the, the ISIS and this bullshit than 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 nice people who happen to be Muslim. Nice people who happen to be Muslim, well, just trying to get by in life, and, and of course they're the most horrified. Yeah. They're the ones that suddenly like there are going to be hate crimes against them. They're right. going to be like yeah, like these are the people who every time this happens, their storefront is probably going to get a brick right thrown, and, and so do the Sikhs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and so, you know, <laughs> yeah everybody guys. who's brown with a beard and maybe a turban, maybe not, right, is going to feel the sting of this. Yeah, and also, so I read quite a bit about this particular this bunch of people, ISIS. Uh huh. So they have re they have declared the caliphate, which is this very complicated thing you do. Yeah, I read about it. It's pretty weird. It's like almost this incantation. This all these things have to fall into place like a planetary alignment. Then yeah. you can declare the caliphate. They consider, th so they are they are like Scalia. They are originalists yeah, yeah. with the Koran. So they believe that <clears throat> um, you don't have to kill Christians and Jews. You can you you can you can kill at them. You can attack them until they they pay a tax, right? Which is a word for I can't remember it. Right. You pay a tax and you admit that you have that you are uh, submissive. Right. And then you can live. They li but do you know who their worst enemies are? Us? Every other Muslim. Every oh, Muslim that okay. does not live the by the, the, the originalism that they do. Right. So that's why they're completely happy just to, un like, the poor Yazidis, which aren't even really Muslims, they're just killing like animals. And, yeah. and uh, uh, so that's who their real enemy is. Right. Failing to understand that and just tarring every poor syrian who puts their children in a rubber dinghy you don't do that right unless something behind you is really motivating your ass to get out right you're fl these are the people who are fleeing the people that you're worried about yes 
They're not the people that you're worried about. They are the people running away from those people. Right. Right. And they're they're on our side, really. Right. And and if you want so we've got 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Right. It is a thing that's not going away. Correct. So it seems to me the best the modern world, or the Western, I should say modern world, the Western world can do is try to embrace that uh, charitably and lovingly and in so doing marginalize the worst impulses of this thing. Right. 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 What we what we are doing by responding uh, – you know, every time someone posts a, a wildly ignorant meme and tries to get traction with it, and they're doing it a lot. Uh, I'm looking right now at a T-shirt that's a, a picture of sort of an outline of the United States of America. Oh, no. And the words, fuck off, we're full oh, God. on it. Um, every Have time... they ever been to the Dakotas? Right. Well, yeah, we're not full. There, there's nobody there. There's nothing but room there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Here's another one. Let me get this straight. It's This meme says, we have enough money to support 500,000 inbred savages, wow. but not enough for our senior citizens to get a cost of living increase. And then it says at the bottom, thank the ones who helped put Obama in the White House and the ones keeping him there. There's so many things wrong with that. Well, that's I a, can't even dissect it. That is a bird's nest of derp. It is amazing. Uh, <sighs> So anyway, I mean, did, oh, sorry. Do those people actually give a fuck about the, co the cost of living increase for seniors? No, no, no. Are they out there fighting for a tax increase so there's a cola? Oh yeah, increase no, for, for let, social security. If we, if, you know, if we were to look at probably the socialist or the, or the politics of these uh, of these people that would post this, yeah, I'm going to guess social security saving social security not high on their list and feeding the homeless. I don't think so. Yeah, that's socialism. God so damn it's, it, it's a straw man. It's a it's eight thousand. I think there were twenty straw men in. There was a straw man per word, right? In that uh, in that meme, and the point to me is that uh, it's just. I mean, I guess. Where am I going with this? They're afraid. They're and they're just their fears are being allowed well to run rampant. The angry right tends to be. And the brain guy can write into us. I think it's the amygdala. It's the little angry. <laughs> it's the little thing in the middle of the brain that just goes because it's all where right. all the anger is and the, the reptile fight impulses. or flight exactly part of the brain. And it's all all of those impulses are so fear based. And, yeah. And we're not gonna. You cannot just go through life in white knuckle terror as a country. Right. You've got to like. Unfortunately, right, up. right now, what sells. In politics, in uh, news reporting, what yeah. sells is white knuckle terror. Yeah. That's what sells. And unfortunately, it plays right into the terrorist's hands. If your the job description is terrorist, you're loving that. What you're selling is making people white knuckle afraid. Right. And the thing is that we're playing right into that, right into those hands. Every time we act out of fear, yep. they win. Exactly. That's literally how you make a terrorist win is by being terrorized. Terrorism really is not the act itself. No. It is not this horrible thing that, that they did in Paris the other day or that they did in Beirut the week before or when they blew up the Russian airliner in the Sinai the week before that. Right. right. That is, that is a, a violent act. But the point... Is to make you afraid. So if a terrorist picks up an AK-47 in Paris and says, watch, I can make Americans shit the bed. And then America shits the bed. They win. They win. So everybody just chill the fuck out. Right? Well, right. I, I mean, and, and, you know, you can't control being afraid. There's good reason to you be You can control being afraid. Well, what you can do is you can control your response to your fear. Yes. That's what I... I mean, I... It's scary when... When you know that someone out there uh, is planning on bombing, when when you know that people are trying, are are when you know that you're not entirely safe. Yeah, from, they're from doing this. it right now. There are people right this minute, no question at all. Doing and that. that's okay to it's it's okay to be afraid of that. Yeah. However, if your response to your fear is no brown people, right? No brown people anywhere, right? Uh, if they if they have a name, if their name is Muhammad or yeah. Abdul. They're out. Right. If they wear a headscarf right. instead of, like, a hat, then they're out. If, you're, if the impulse to that fear is you will run to the voting booth and, and put into office an unqualified lunatic whose only qualification is that they responded properly to your terror. 
Right. They responded in the way that they res- they responded to their fear in the same way that you responded to your fear. Or they're just using your fear. Or they or they've whipped you up into a right. frenzy. And that they are hand in hand with the terrorists. Right. Saying, "Okay, your your cause I'm effect or vice versa, you know, I will I will reap the benefits of what you've done." Right. And that's and that's literally what they're doing. They are working with the terrorists, probably not literally. Yeah. They're not calling up the terrorists and saying, "Hey, keep this up. It's working great for me." But yeah. they're 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 taking their part in it, yeah. which is to whip up the frenzy even further, yeah. because they see that they have an opportunity. Yeah, and there might be a lesson to take from this. It's an obscure time period um, where uh, what was it called? It's the Bush years <laughs> to see what happens when a country loses its collective marbles. Yeah, over a a ghastly attack. Yeah. Anybody who's thinking of writing and saying that nine, that we're minimizing what happened in Paris or nine eleven, don't. That's absurd to claim. Yes, but you, you know, welcoming welcoming immigrants into the country is a great thing to do, and it's one way to make the world a smaller place. And you know, it makes borders thinner, and it just makes. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. Which always works out well. Right. Like if, as long as uh, you know, as you don't want to be stupid about it. Right. You don't want to just open everything up completely. But the point is that, like, diversity helps. Right. It always helps. Right. Uh, when p- people who hate Mexicans, which is hopefully a smaller and smaller group, I'm like, you've never met a Mexican. If you hate a Mexican, you've never met one. You know, and I think it's, it's – we should be inviting people I- into the franchise of the American family. But they're taking our jobs, Mark. They're taking our jobs. But uh, – you know, the, there, then there's a there's another problem, and this is kind of the homegrown problem that the British have had. Mm. A lot of Pakistanis used to be, you know, British Empire. A lot of Pakistanis and 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 other people from from uh, uh, East Asia um, come into Britain. Right, immigrants as they do, they put their heads down. They, you know, the, the parents of the families want to work. They want to get ahead. They want a great education for they, their kids. They, they just want. A life that isn't surrounded by violence. By violence and repression and stupidity. And so they come to the West. Right. So then they have the, their children are born in the West. The children are born in Britain. And they might, they're very likely brown children who are the children of Muslims and, and foreigners. And then racist working class white assholes in these countries. Treat them badly. Treat these first generation kids terribly. Right. Alienating the shit out of them. Yes, and so these kids then go. Oh well, I have no home here. I have no affinity for this country. So, what does my parents, you know, the land of my forefathers, have to offer me? Right. So you get a bunch of vulnerable, fairly. But they can't go back. They generally can't go back. So what they do is they stay there and they find they find clerics. Yeah. Who are who may or may not be good for them. Yeah. Who say things like, "Well, obviously they have rejected you." Yeah. The the, the large they that's in this the country. West. Yeah, has rejected you. Yeah. You can feel that. You hear it every day. They're literally saying it to you. We reject you. Yeah. So clearly, then you're one of us. Right. If you're not one of them, right. you're one of us. And here's what we do: we blow shit up. Right. We take revenge on this country that is that is so s- severely wounded. You. Right. They treat you badly. Treat them badly back. And ta-da! You have a homegrown citizen. Yeah. Who. Is only alienate is only doing this because you treated him so shittily in the first place. Right, because you you allowed your children and you allowed your education system and you allowed your society to be so flippantly and casually evil and right. shitty to a child that the you know we talked about that kid the clockmaker Ahmed Mohammed right and he's like yeah my whole life they've called me you know terrorist kid and yeah. the bomb maker and it's like oh great. Yeah, awesome. we're saying this to children, and then we're like, "Why are they blowing us up?" Yeah, you shitty Texan, you know, school kids. He's as American as you are, right? You know, and but but we train. You know, it, this is the problem. The problem isn't the people that want to blow us up. The problem is that we encourage them to want to blow us up, and every time they blow something up. We get worse, and then they get worse. We do exactly the wrong thing. We do. We take exactly the wrong tack. Now, now I'm not saying – I'm also and, – and this is another sticky wicket for the skeptic and atheist community is I'm not, I'm not a pacifist. No. I am, I am for peace at every possible opportunity. But I think there are – there is a military response to things like this. Absolutely. Um, uh, I just think that it, 
has to be very considered and very well thought out. And the less – our drones are blowing up weddings in Pakistan like weekly. Right. You know, or not Pakistan. Or maybe, well, actually Pakistan, but mostly Afghanistan. Right. So what is that doing for us? Right. What are we getting from that and what are we losing? Right. What because, we, because for every terrorist that we're blowing up, we're creating five. Right. Because they, if we're even blowing one up. Right, exactly. And the other thing, the, and so we, I mean, the, the whole point of this conversation is that this is not an easy issue. And if anyone tries to make it an easy issue and tries to make it a black and white issue, they are doing something very dangerous. They're and wrong. Very wrong. Yeah. I mean, so the, yeah, the point isn't Muslims are good. The point isn't Muslims are bad. That's, neither of those statements is true. Right. Those statements are both false. Right. The truth is a lot more sticky than that. It is very sticky, and, and I'm sure we'll get some responses. And, and, you know, it would also be very interesting to, to hear from, I don't know if we have any Muslim listeners. Or former Muslims. Or former Muslims, but to kind of get, get hear what they have to say about this. It, yeah. is, it is vexing. And it's okay. if you're a person who really is looking for an ethical answer to these things, it's okay to be vexed. I'm vexed. Yeah. Right? I'm pretty vexed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's so many different ways to talk about this, and there's so many different... I just I can't believe what I'm seeing. I can't believe... You know, I believe in the United States of America. I actually, you know, for all of its <laughs> crazy faults, and there are a lot of them, and we haven't fixed them yet, Yeah, I do love the, the promise of this country. I, I totally agree. I love it. But we have to keep reminding ourselves of what that is. And the promise of this country is that every single person is the same. Yeah. And, you know, what's wrong is the act of, of blowing somebody up, right. not who's blowing somebody up. Right. And so we, t we need to go after people who, blow, who, who are there to blow people up or who are there to uh, encourage it. We need to stop. We, you know, we need to go after that. Absolutely. Right. That's criminal behavior. It's unacceptable on any level right. ever. However, at the same time, our focus should be on how we accept people, how we enfranchise people, how we learn the good things that they have to offer and, and, and how we best engage their best parts right. so that they can help. And how we neutralize the worst impulses of ideas. Right. I, you know, Islam, I, I, all religion is an idea. Yeah, it's all ideas. Now, how do you do you convince Muslims that they are part of the broader modern family and the Western family by drawing cartoons of their prophet provocatively? It, you can do that, but I don't think you're helping. Right. Right. And I agree. It's bullshit that that is a thing. Yeah. It's bullshit that there's something so sacred that you can't draw it. But you know what? It's the it's a fact that there are people who hold that so sacred. Right. So it's a, and that's a really tough conversation to have. How do you challenge? Well, the truth is that the idea, I mean, if you're not challenging the idea in their minds by drawing Muhammad, what you're doing is you're challenging the idea in, in sort of the common marketplace of ideas, but you're convincing all of the people who already are convinced, right? You're not convincing you're truly the worst way to engage anybody in a conversation. The worst way to engage, to convince anyone of anything is to flip them off. Right. You don't win. You, you literally, you may feel better. Well, you're not, you're not, you're not wanting a conversation. Right. Right. You may, and it may make you feel awesome. It's to be like, ah, fuck yeah. you Muslims. It's a provocation, but you, you have lost uh, any, you, ha you cannot possibly hope that doing that makes the world any better. Right. It makes you feel better. And that's it. That is the extent of that engagement. Yeah. And, and maybe it makes, you know, guys, other guys like you feel better. Right. But you have not made the world better. You've right. made the world a little bit worse. Yeah. Agreed. That's my feeling. All right. Well, we, I think we've said enough that somebody's pissed off at us. Phew, right are we now. done? Oh, God. <laughs> So uh, so if you are one of the pissed off... Oh, my God. I keep scrolling through things. and I, So here's, you want to hear this meme? Oh, boy. This is awesome. White people, the only race you can legally discriminate against. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> God, whoever put that off, uh, just fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard to be white. 
God. You guys should you should try being straight white male. It's the worst. I checked two of those boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I, I've got it. And you know what? I got it pretty fucking good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so nice. Uh, anyway, uh, if you have anything you'd like to write into us about, go ahead and do it. Uh, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call in. That's 424-666-8442. Um, the Facebook page is facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Or search out the TGIA Members Only Lounge on Facebook. Uh, it's a great place to see memes that will make your head explode. <sighs> uh, but also to commune with nice people. Yes. So all of that could be happening. Uh, hey, uh, thank you again, Mark, for filling in. Uh, you've been just... A trooper. The past what, like two and a half months, you've been on for most of it. That's well. I've been happy to be here. I can't believe anybody still listens, but thanks for doing it. And, yeah. Uh, and welcome back next week, Frank. I think. I think so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, also thanks to Mackenzie for all your hard work on our social media. That's very. It's, it, you're you're a trooper. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of that fine fine music. Yes. Uh, that we use every week. It is. Uh, it, it makes me happy every single time I hear it. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. Uh, tuning in. Dude, that's for not a thing. Tuning into our live broadcast <laughs> from <laughs> RKO for listening to our ramblings. Uh, we sure do appreciate you. And we will talk to you next week. Au revoir. Bye bye.